All right, diminished arpeggios. Now, I know we haven't spoken too much about diminished chords, and there's a reason for that. When you have a root, a flat three, and a flat five, you get this, this instability. So even though we could make five full chord shapes of diminished chords, they pretty much only get used in triad form. So in our triad lessons, obviously, we'll go in great detail about that. But for right now, what you, the one thing that you really want to know and use is your diminished chord arpeggios. Because as you know, your arpeggio is your chord, but in scale form. So when we're working through our solos, right, and we're talking about our seventh chords, we know that our diminished chord, our diminished triad, is the upper triad in our dominant seventh chord. It's that third, fifth, and flat seven of that dominant chord, right? So it's a very useful thing when we want to accentuate that diminishedness of the dominant seventh chord and so it's nice to know what our structure is to solo and improvise over inside that whole major scale pattern so that we have a framework to really embody that diminishedness of that 3-5 flat 7 as it pertains to the dominant 7 chord. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the five patterns of the diminished chord arpeggio. Again, not full diminished chord shapes. Because when we play diminished chords, we really don't double up roots, thirds, and fifths. Again, you can. You can. If you have piano, you know, and you're playing, you know, you have ten fingers, you can do that stuff. But on guitar, it's really not that practical, and it gets a little overloading for the ear. So we're just going to do just our five shapes of our diminished arpeggios. So let's jump right in, and let's do C. So C, for pattern one, there's our octave shape. And now again, we're not doing chord shapes. We're just going straight to the arpeggio, right? So here is our arpeggio. Ugly, right? Now notice that we skipped the third string. You're going to have to because, you know, if we were to go back, our perfect fifth is our open third string since we can't play the flat five behind it and we're not playing a minor seven flat five chord where we're playing the seventh, we have to skip the fifth string. Pattern one will not be the only pattern number where we have to skip a string. All right, pattern two, here's our octave shape and our diminished arpeggio. Pattern three, octave shape, and our diminished arpeggio. Pattern four, octave shape, diminished arpeggio. Lastly, pattern five, octave shape and our diminished arpeggio. Very cool. So that was your pattern one through five, diminished arpeggios. Again, we're not going to go through progressions where, you know, we're going to play, you know, a two, three, seven progression where you're going to have to know your diminished chord and your diminished arpeggio. You're going to find as we go forward that there's a perfect time and a perfect place to use your diminished chords and to accentuate them in your improvising with your diminished arpeggio. Basically, you just want to know the framework over which you're going to solo so that when you visualize that diminishedness, especially when we're talking about the upper triad of the dominant seventh chord, you have something very specific to work with. So post your video doing exactly what I just did. Pick a key, five shapes, 
of your diminished arpeggio. Thank you.